Hey, it's Tammy. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to make a name puzzle with my Xtool M1 today. It's super fast, super easy to do. Um, and you can do most of it just in Xtool Creative Space. The only thing I'm gonna do is import a rounded edge rectangle because I don't have one available in Xtool. I only have a rounded square. And when you try to resize it to a rectangle, it kind of loses the um, corners and I don't care for how it looks. So I went to Canva. Um, using a free account and I was able just to get a rectangle, a rounded edge rectangle outline. And so I'm going to bring that in here real quick. Okay, so there you go. Now I actually with the free edition had to uh, not get the transparent background just to show you how you could go ahead and remove this. So we're going to real quick edit the image and we're going to just take the background out of the outside and the inside and that's it. Let's go ahead and save it and now we can resize it. So for a small child, you kind of want to make a bigger um, rectangle so that the letters are big enough that their little fingers can handle them and you're not worried about them putting them in their mouth. So I am on inches right now. Go to settings and you can switch from millimeters to inches. And I am going to make this a little bit more elongated. So I'm going to have to unlock this so I can do a non-dimensional uh, resize here. Okay, now I wanna make it a little bit higher. Let's see, that's eight inches. That might be a little much. Let's go down to about six inches, I think. Six and a half, let's do six, six, that's good. Okay, and then I'm going to put a name in there and I'm going to actually put my granddaughter's name in here. So we'll go ahead and go over to text and I'm going to put Charlie in here. And I like the font of um, Arial Rounded MT Bold. Okay, and you're going to say, oh wait, that's too small, but we're going to fix that. So we're going to go ahead and resize this and if I just do it here, I'm only going to be able to make it so tall and I want to make it taller. So you'll see that I can't do that. But a little trick you can do here is you just go up here again, unlock the dimensions, and then I can make it more elongated. So the letters are much bigger. The size of the letters are about four and a half inches. I'm going to go even a little bit taller and I'm going to pull this out to fill up the space. Okay. Now there's two ways you can do these letters. You can double stack the letters on three millimeter um, wood, or you can cut the letters themselves out of six millimeter wood so that they're a little bit higher than the puzzle. And so little fingers can grab them. Or the other alternative is you can put finger holes on each of these letters. Okay. But we're going to do a uh, three millimeter and six millimeter wood. I just like the look of that a little bit better. Okay, we just have one more thing to do. The actual rectangle is in is imported as an image and we actually need to um, outline that. So we ha now have a path to cut with. So let's go ahead and do an outline. And I'm not gonna do the inside, I just wanna do the outside. So I'm gonna uncheck that box and that's fine. I just need to be able to see it and grab it and make sure it's there so I can see it. Let's go ahead and highlight the actual image and we're gonna delete that. So now we have a path to cut and I am good with that. It gives me a little bit more space on my letters if I wanna even make them a little bit bigger. Okay, now make sure this is centered. I'm gonna do a quick uh, centering by highlighting the outline and the inside and we're going to do a line horizontal, a line vertical. Okay, so now that is perfectly centered and we're ready to go ahead and get going. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut all of this. We also need to do a back plate. So I'm just gonna copy this back frame with a control C and then do a control V and paste it below. You can also right click for a copy and paste. Now I'm not gonna get both of these on one, so I'm just gonna turn off the cut for this one and we'll come back and do it on another sheet. And it can be hanging off if it's turned off, it's not gonna be. But let's go ahead and highlight all of this and set it up for cutting. Now I am in inches instead of millimeters, I need to switch that to X Tools three millimeter basswood plywood, you just go ahead and select it and it'll uh, go ahead and set those settings for you. We just need to click 
what we want to include. We want to cut it. It defaults to 100, 5, and 1. If you wanted to change those, you would have to go back up, select material, and user define material. My uh, wood is actually 2.8, but this works just fine. I've tried it before, and I'm not going to have an issue with it. Okay, I currently am not connected to my device, so we need to do that. So I need to turn my machine on. And it's connecting. Now, this is actually too big for this wood. So we're going to have to adjust. Okay. Now, I should have put the wood in first before I did this to know that. But let's just go ahead and highlight all of this. And we're going to resize it together so it'll stay dimensional. Now, if you're worried about this fitting on the wood, you can always do a framing where the laser does a footprint of the material and you can see if it's going to fit or not. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty confident we'll be okay with that. I'm going to switch back to millimeters real quick, and then we'll process. I always just like to make sure at the end. This is the most important screen. You just want to make sure that what you see is what's going to happen. So since this is a kind of purple-blue uh, color, it means the, this is all going to cut, and that's what I want. So let's go ahead and hit Start. It's going to tell me to press the button on the front of the machine. Do not leave your device unattended when it is working. Okay, you want to hit the button on the front. I've already hit it, and I've started my first letter. You can see the C is cutting. I'm going to let this run for a second. I've had some people ask me how loud the machine is, so I want you to be able to hear it. I like the size of these letters. Okay, look how nice that cut. It's already fallen out, so we know we have a nice clean cut. I will be speeding up this video for your viewing pleasure and uh, putting a little music to it. Okay, we are all done with our cut. That turned out super cute. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And I'm actually just gonna move it up and see if we can fit the base plate down here real fast. Okay, let's go ahead and move the Charlie portion up. We're gonna turn this off so that won't cut again. And then let's bring the bottom plate up. Let's get it centered. We're going to set it to cut. Sometimes it'll kind of get stuck if you just go to one of the other items and come back to cut, then it'll turn to blue. Okay, let's hit process. 
That's all we want to cut. That's perfect. We'll go ahead and hit start. Okay. We'll go ahead and let this cut and we'll come back in a moment. Okay, that cut is done. Nice clean cut for the base plate. Now I have a choice of two things. I can come back and cut these letters again in six millimeter or do a second set in three millimeter. And then I can glue the sets one on top of the other to make it a thicker letter. I'm gonna do six millimeter thickness next. Okay, now you see the new wood in there. We're gonna go ahead and bring all this down a little and we're going to just cut the charlie now this is going to be a 5.8 thickness we're going to have to switch to user define for this triangular prisms cut and we're going to do 105 and i need to do three passes for it to cut all the way through Okay, we're going to turn off the outside frames off and we're going to turn off this frame. So all we're going to cut up this time is the actual letters. I can move them up. It's, I'm probably not going to do a bunch with this wood on the side, but it never hurts to save wood. Okay, we're going to hit process. I didn't turn the Charlie on, so it says there's nothing to cut. So let's turn the Charlie on and try that again. Hit process. That's exactly what I want to have cut. I'm going to hit start. And okay, so these are the three components. We have the letters, we have the word puzzle, and then we have the backing. I will glue these two pieces together. I'm going to paint everything and show you the finished product. But it's a super easy and fun project. Okay, now I'm back here. We are all done. It's time I need to clean the laser, which I'll do when I finish this project. And then you can see everything is fine here. I can move this back and I can save this if I want to just speed up my next um, puzzle. I would just probably switch out the name. I can just do file, save as, and then go ahead and save the puzzle. I've already saved it once, so I'm just going to hit save, and then I can go and close out. You can always save before you start your project, too, if you just want to make sure you don't have any issues. And here's the finished puzzle. I used my Americana gel stain to stain the wood, and I used my Tuliard acrylic paint markers in pastel colors to paint the letters and add the dots. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you will be notified when I put up a new video.